of you here because I did not pre-publish I did not pre-publish the video so nobody knows I'm doing a live stream but in case you didn't know my schedule I will do a live stream on Fridays at 8 p.m. and pretty much that uh, stick I stick to that schedule unless I announce it ahead of time on a prior week but unless I'm going on vacation or something I do do a live stream on Fridays at 8 p.m. so that's uh, Pacific time so that's kind of a given so if, even if you don't see me post anything in advance I will be doing that it's just hard to to, to time it sometimes because very busy during the day and hard to put up the the topic when I don't even know what the topic is yet how are you doing guys how are you doing so entire Meyer great cold nobody got Don low Jason Steve Stephen McGill thank you for being here so just stay put guys stay put so let me again tell you the format for those of you who don't know the format of what I do here can you say why is he talking so long you know it's like uh, an hour and a half it's not an hour and a half I spend only 30 minutes at the most on a topic maybe even less on a specific topic like what you see in the title and the rest is Q&A if you don't want to stick around you don't have to stick around for the Q&A you can just stay for the main topic and of course I have my weekly videos which is on the shorter side of what I talk about and somebody will ask uh, your videos are not that short we want it to be five minutes long uh, trust me if I made videos that are five minutes long no one's gonna watch it so for those who think they're like YouTube experts and know exactly how to do this right I'm, I'm gonna tell you if you're not interested in the topic you're not gonna watch if I make it five minutes or 20 minutes most of my videos are 20 minutes so how are you doing guys so our last week's topic was about Afghanistan last week's topic was Afghanistan how's that doing this week <laughs> I mean I can almost predict I guess I did predict but here we are so now we have a new we have a new terrorist group and that's going to be the focus now for surveillance and it's going to affect all of us now again once again they're going to find some excuse oh guys we you know you 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 all kind of took it easy all these years and you weren't afraid anymore about terrorism so we're going to put the fear in you so we can justify more surveillance so now it's ISIS K that's a new one ISIS K so ISIS K is uh, oh it, you know of course ISIS K is gonna kill people they're gonna kill Americans you know you you always wonder if this is a false flag or not you always do wonder you always do wonder because with a false flag you can again justify the military infrastructure that will build all the surveillance once again on each of us and oh we have a new threat so what what did I say that's what I said last week and here we are and you're saying oh uh, Biden is so dumb he's so dumb that he did that to Afghanistan maybe he's dumb maybe he's not maybe uh, maybe deep state is trying to to, uh, to to put this fear in maybe they give wrong information to Biden so that he will decide in a way that will shame him maybe who knows what it always ends up the same it always up the same guys surveillance more surveillance and here we are and now we're going to talk about specifically the surveillance of the internet and I've made some videos about that in the past and in fact I've been talking about this topic for wow I mean closing on 10 years now on the internet with my prior presence on Periscope and I was talking about the same thing and for a while there I thought I was wrong for a while I thought the surveillance was more limited because of what I saw in the press because I have no independent way of going to research this so I have to rely on, on what other people research and I said where's the surveillance done and in the past I actually uh, thought that the surveillance if I were going to do it I would do the surveillance at the internet trunks not at the ISP level but at the trunks that handles pretty much you know 70% of the worldwide internet goes through these trunks they're fiber optic trunks and these trunks have little uh, multiplexers at the end that can actually 
have some spy devices in there. I've, I've known people in telecommunications, they go into the closets where they attach devices into the multiplexers, into these uh, trunks like, uh, you know, like uh, Level One and CenturyLink and all these different companies that handle the trunks. And I said, oh, that's logically where the spying would occur. It's very logical because that's where the big, big traffic comes, from, comes in. Then you can kind of isolate traffic you want and then store them on the side. And, uh, and then I thought I was wrong. I thought I was wrong. So the reason I thought was, I was wrong was because Guardian, the publication Guardian, actually did research on this and said that their research points to peering stations. Peering stations are what the ISPs use to aggregate the internet before it goes into the trunk. And, the, and they do that so they don't have to pay for more connections and more fiber optic channels and so on. So they share. And the sharing is done through these peering stations. And the biggest company that does the peering stations uh, are actually, the biggest company that does peering is actually AT&T and comes from the original AT&T from the old days. So it's, it was a very powerful company back in the day and they still had these peering stations during the beginning of the internet. So, so now I thought, given that that was the case, that in fact uh, the, the article on The Guardian, and you can go search for this peering station once on AT&T on The Guardian, showed actually the eight peering stations in the U.S. and uh, they were in all the big, the eight big cities. So let me see, Atlanta, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, LA, uh, Dallas. What am I missing there? A couple more. Uh, maybe Colorado. I'm not sure. I forgot. So, so anyway, there were like eight of them. And basically, all the internet traffic from ISPs get funneled into those peering stations. And that's where the three-letter agency in question, the National Zucking Agency, that's what they actually uh, used as the, the capture point. So in this article, they actually show that there's an algorithm in there from AT&T where they actually do the search criteria based on word search. So that's why sometimes you wonder, why does this guy always say zucking? Why do I always say zucking here? Obviously, zuck pertains to Facebook, but in the context of why do I refer to the National Zucking Agency or the Zucking IA or the Zucking BI? Why do I say that? The reason is because of the word search. There is, there is a, you know, there are algorithms on the internet that spot all that. And by doing something less popular, then I don't come up on the top of the list. Otherwise, all of you guys will go type it on there and then we pop up on top of the list because you don't believe there's a list. There is a list. This is, you know, there's a word search list that AT&T actually filtered out at the behest of the National Zucking Agency for, for forwarding to the Utah Data Center. This is in that article in The Guardian. Okay, so, you know, I would imagine this to be true anyway, but it's kind of nice to get collaboration or corroboration, sorry, corroboration from, from somebody else that says, oh yeah, you're right. So a lot of times I theorize things. So I theorize things about my last video. I theorized, you know, image processing. What, what are they doing with the image and how are they getting information on the image that they can use for surveillance? And I theorize it and, you know, my theory often will become reality if it's not already reality. And fortunately, we cannot rely on just published reports because if I always did that, we'll always be behind and falling behind in the game and we'll never know what planned surveillance they have. So that is not what this channel does. What I do in this channel, guys, what I do here is I actually project. I project a... a, a infrastructure, I project a surveillance plan, and then from based on that projection, I, I uh, would then imagine, oh yeah, they're going to spy on us in this manner or that manner. 
and then we can prepare for it and, and uh, react accordingly. And we can't go like the sheep, the bulk of the people, they just react and say, oh, I haven't heard it, so it must not be happening. And by the time I say it, it's typically already late. So I'm trying to, to prevent that by being more of a, a way of doing a projection. So wh now why am I talking about this? This is something that I did talk about back in uh, seven years ago or something on Periscope. And I talked about the fact that I think there's spying going on at the backbone. And that's called the internet backbone. So there's kind of two spying levels here. They can spy on our traffic at what is called the uh, the uh, um, the ISP level or the pairing stations, and they could be spying on us at the backbone. And because I didn't have any proof, I I kind of stopped talking about the backbone because you know I, I was starting to wonder if maybe there's a flaw in my argument. And this week I found out that I was correct. They are, in fact, spying on the backbone. So, there's again, they're spying already of all internet traffic at the pairing station. And now, this kind of proves that the spying occurs at the backbone. But not just from three-letter agencies. Three-letter agencies are, in fact, buying the data from the internet backbone. They're, they are buying it. The internet backbone are the trunks that crisscross the country in fiber optic lines with companies like CenturyLink and Level One and then many sub players in between there. So so if since they aggregate the internet, most of the internet will flow through level one and century link somewhere, and there's other players, but those are a couple of the biggest ones. And, uh, and they may resell some of that. So it, there's actually, a, you know, the wholesaler. I actually wasn't aware of the fact that they resold this. So there's brokers and they resell this. And there's actually also brokers that sell the data. I didn't know that. I actually didn't know that, that they, they were actually brokers. So they're like salespeople going around there and say, hey, you want to buy your internet data, you know, to uh, track what actual servers do so you can do certain things. And of course, they're going to sell it first to three letter agencies and perhaps any government that's willing to pay because they're selling it commercially even. They're selling it to companies, to private companies. So now let me, let me, uh, let me just uh, tell you how this kind of data can be used because that's exactly what Gadon Lowe here said, why do you need, why do they need this info? Well, let me just tell you what, what it is. <clears throat> so, they can, of course, track the traffic just at an endpoint. So, you can be at an ISP and you can put, uh, you know, detection uh, of internet traffic at, cent at um, Spectrum, Charter, you know, Verizon, all these, all the different players that uh, deal with the internet and you can put sensors and all that and and as you can see that's kind of difficult because there are many of these players and and it's kind of different when you capture traffic going down to a local level there's there's some limitations in what you can see there so one of the problems is international traffic and one of the sources of international traffic as an example is tor Guys heard of Tor? Think Dave. Oh my gosh. Dave, how are you doing, buddy? My gosh. Great to see uh great to see some old friends here. Th th great to see you again, Dave. I've seen some of your videos lately. So, yes, I've seen your live streams even. So, Dave in Osaka, you can follow this uh channel, Dave in Osaka and he he's in Japan and I used to uh do live streams on Periscope with Dave back in the day when we were both on Periscope. Now we're both on YouTube. So you can follow Dave if you're interested about what he shows about Japan. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. So anyway, let me get back to, uh, to my thought process here. One of the problems is if you're a guy trying to protect yourself by using Tor, 
you know, that's an example of a, or a VPN, and you're trying to hide your activities from somebody, government, spying, surveillance, uh, whatever, or maybe just your own personal security. And, and the assumption always is if you're using Tor or a VPN, you must be a bad guy, which is just, uh, you know, uh, not not the case. But if you're if you're interested in uh, interested in tracking somebody, and you track, let's say somebody posted on Silk Road. Actually, that's one of the uses of this. So this guy uh, was it Ulbricht. He uh, he would make a post on Silk Road. That's his website where he did the Silk Road, you know, in the dark web where you can buy stuff and uh, buy drugs and sex trafficking and whatever else they sell on, on that thing. Okay, so the, he would make a post on there and, of course, the Zucking BI would say, okay, well, where did that come from? Where did that post come from? And they will find the IP address and because he's using Tor... They would then check and say, oh, that IP address is some Tor server in France. So they're going to have a dead end. It's going to be dead end. You can't find anything else. So what they do, and this is how they actually caught Ulbricht, uh, was instead of trying to break Tor because they can't break the encryption of Tor, what they did was do a timing attack. And the timing attack is based on a God's view of the internet. In order for a timing attack to be done, you must be capable of seeing the internet as a whole and then seeing what is happening at a certain point. So a certain piece of traffic, in this case, he posted something on, on Silk Road and they don't know where it came from because it came from Tor. So what they do is then if you have a God's eye view of the internet, you put sensors on level one, century link, or somewhere around there, and you look for where that exact pulse of traffic came from. So you have a timestamp, you have a timestamp, and you have some range of time where this amount of traffic, as you can see how much we posted on Silk Road, was posted on there, and by doing a time comparison, you can say, oh, such and such a traffic came from North Carolina. I actually don't know where he was caught, but uh, so but, but let's just theorize here. So they said that there was a pulse of traffic that came at the same exact time because they have an overall view of the internet. And the pulse of traffic that posted on Silk Road came from um, a similar traffic came from North Carolina. So if that's the case, what do I mean I'm cutting out? I'm, I don't see anything cut out. So, uh, uh, I guess you're right. It's giving an error here. So, if that's the case, then, then uh, all they have to do is then watch the internet flow from everywhere, meaning at the trunks, and be able to do a timing attack and see if somebody posts anywhere. Let's say you posted on YouTube and they wanted to catch you. Who? Big Daddy. Big Daddy posted on YouTube. Big Daddy posted on YouTube. So they, they know the pulse of traffic that went to YouTube at the exact time because they caught it on, on uh, you know, the logs and the track. Okay, we got that. So they were they're then go looking around the internet for similar pulse of traffic that came on. Even if it's encrypted, find the similar pulse of traffic that came around to some entry point in the internet. And they can do this. First of all, generally, they can say, okay, the traffic came from the U.S. Okay, so then they, they got it there. The traffic came from North Carolina. And then, oh, the traffic came from Charlotte. And, you know, then they, they now, now they, uh, they have a better picture now. And then they said, okay, maybe it came from that particular VPN server. And then they go to that VPN server and then do a timing attack right after the VPN server, right before. So they see all the traffic that came out of that VPN server and all the traffic that came in and said, time, timing attack, who made an input that came out and the output at the exact same moment? And then they say, oh, that happened to, that, that was that computer with this IP address 
was over there. That is what a timing attack is. And, and it's only possible with this kind of global view that they can do on the internet. Now, uh, what is this lower quality? Sorry, I'm, I'm missing uh, a comments about lower quality. Uh, there's no evidence of that here. Looks okay. Excellent connection. Yeah, I don't see, I don't see anything here. Okay, so anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is that, yes, there's a, there's, th these are, you know, now that they're actively actually tracking this, and I didn't know that they actually were, were actively tracking this and selling this data called NetFlow, the way traffic goes in and out of the internet, then, uh, they can catch anyone. I mean, if you're a high value target, you, you're not going to be able to hide. Not even with Tor. Now, of course, there, this is not a concern for the average person. I mean, we're not, we're not important enough to, for them to waste this kind of resources. Because it's, it is time consuming. You, you have to, to search for specific traffic and go pound that and you have to do it multiple times like triangulation you got to hit it and isolate where the traffic is coming from so a, a one post from silk from Ulbricht to Silk Road wasn't going to do it he had to post it several times and they had to do a surveillance over a period of time so that's that's uh, that's what happened in his case and they thought that somebody actually broke Tor and in fact no he did they didn't break Tor they just said we can't decrypt Tor so we'll just do a global view of the internet and just go for matching pulses of traffic. Just do, you know, if this came out here, where'd it come from? Is there a similar traffic that came from elsewhere? And they just keep a database of all this, of everything that's happening, and they can say, oh yeah, back in the day, that happened. And you, now you can see how this can even be more scary. So, at, as you know, most of your traffic most of your traffic on the internet today, this is not, this was not true five years ago, but today, most of the traffic on the internet is encrypted. It's encrypted using HTTPS or otherwise known as TLS. So most things are encrypted by TLS. The problem is this. If they actually have a copy of the internet flow, that's what I'm describing here. If they have a copy of what actually is happening on the internet and saving that, they could, in the future, break the encryption. As you know, there's a way to break the encryption using a quantum computer. Now, don't know if that's something that can be done in real time in, uh, at this moment. Uh, I'm going to guess not yet. I'm going to guess it will take still a lot of time to decrypt, but they can do it. But it's, you know, it's, it, may take, uh, it may take a bit of time to decrypt something, and it's probably not, uh, not instantaneous. But if it gets to the time that true, real quantum computers become available, and then that then makes the possibility that this can be computed in a matter of seconds, then we're done we're done because then they can go back to anything that's encrypted in the past and say oh yeah that may have been encrypted but we can break that encryption in the future because uh, if they're just if they're just protected by TLS somebody can acquire that key and break that key and you'll go figure out the traffic at some point in the future you can go you know figure it out uh, from the past and there's other tricks that that uh, they actually do to to break that, and this is something that you know may not you may not even realize that the three letter agencies actually are out there actively searching for private keys of uh, HTTPS servers. So let let's just say. I'll give you a theoretical here because if, if many of you may not understand this. But TLS is based on a certificate and the certificate is based 
on having a private key that is on the server. If the private key on the server exists and there's a public key that matches it, then that server can then serve HTTPS or encrypted traffic. But if someone is able to capture the private key, either by hacking into the computer, or taking the private key, and some other techniques like uh, looking for old hard drives and looking for old servers that have been uh, uh, rented in the cloud and then going to those hard drives and then phishing for private keys, then there's a possibility that someone could get a private key to a google.com, a facebook.com or any one of that and then be able to de decrypt traffic to those websites based on a certain time period. So let's say that they captured traffic from today, uh, August 27th, and then they manage in the future to get a private key of a server because the server is no longer in use. Three months from now, and the server key has expired, but that private key then can be used to decrypt the traffic from August 27th. So even when you think you're secure, there's other ways of doing this. And it's like if somebody's actually actively recording all this and collecting all this, I mean, how do you zucking win? I mean, it's uh, it's 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 a problem. Way back, way back machine is a whole different concept because it's free form. Tech. I mean, that's that's plain text. I'm talking about even encrypted traffic. Encrypted traffic, being able to break that. In the in the future. So if somebody had uh, the ability to capture traffic from a backbone, whew, and you know, you're know you going to say, well, that's a lot of traffic to save. Uh, with the cost of storage, it's not that much to save. They can afford it. Uh, uh, just, just so you understand you know, how much they spent on the Utah Data Center. I believe they constructed that facility for four billion, that's four billion dollars of computers and storage in that facility in Utah. Four billion. Now, in case you didn't know, they're building three more of those. I don't know what the ongoing costs are of running that facility in Utah, but of course, the four billion is just a startup cost. So let's say they spend a billion a year just to keep it going. I mean, that's a lot of computing power, guys. That's a lot of computing power. And then you're, you're talking about saying they're going to build uh, a total of four of those, not just one. And, and, I, and you, that, that's one agency. That's called the National Zucking Agency. What you didn't know that is that the Zucking IA is creating its own duplicate system. I don't even know where that goes. Yeah, we can afford it. Exactly. So, anyway, that's just some interesting realities for you to think about. Because that's the world we live in now. That's the world we live in. And it's quite fun, right? Quite fun. So, anyway, guys, thank you for, for listening to that little rant. And uh, just to remind you, before we go into the Q&A section, that this broadcast is sponsored by... Linode. So I, I do live stream every every Friday, and my live streams are sponsored by by Linode. And uh, uh, I actually am a very big user of Linode. Actually, I actually transferred even more servers on Linode. I I, I have so many servers on Linode. I, I'm I'm losing count. I'm losing count. So I have a lot of servers on Linode. Uh, lots and lots and lots. So, so why, I mean, why do I go to Linode? I mean, I could go elsewhere. I could go to Amazon AWS. I could go to DigitalOcean. I can go to, uh, there's so many of these players. In fact, you know, I, I, uh, some players are small, some players are large. I've been everywhere. And actually, I've been cutting down on the other ones because they end up to be more costly. And uh, the one that's proving to be the most cost effective for me has been Linode. So anyway, if you use the link linode.com slash Rob Braxman, you're going to get a $100 credit that you can use for two, 
two months, 60 days, uh, on their platform so you can test out their servers. And some of the servers are very inexpensive. You can actually run a full Linux server for as little as $5 a month. So very, very inexpensive to do. And it's actually a way for you to learn how to make Linux servers and so on. It's actually just even for education, it's worth it to spend $5 a month instead of buying a computer or on your own because you can just kill it and set it up. It takes, you know, minutes to set up new servers. So if you're interested in learning about Linux, for example, that's really a good way to, to do it is, is set up a cloud server and do it on Linode. Somebody asked me, oh, how, uh, but is Linode secure? Somebody, somebody asked me that. And it, it was kind of, it's kind of a dumb question. And I, I uh, so I'm going to bring it up again. Uh, it's a Linux machine. You're setting up a Linux machine. If you want it to be secure, then set it up the way you want. I mean, you, you can put anything on your server. So when you get the server from Linode, change the password, change the this and that, they're not going to know anything. They're not going to have access to it. It's up to you. You control that. So it's, it's Linux. So don't assume that they ha somehow have any control over it because you control it and you lock it in so they can't go into to the server and connect it. If they don't have the password, they can't go in there. Okay? So anyway, thank you for for listening to that. And let me get into the Q&A section here since I talked too much already. So thank you, Camille. Thank you. I've been wanting to switch for a long time. Switch to what? Um, Kazakhing ISIS. Uh, there, by the way, uh, IS, IS, you know what I mean, talk about, is, is, is a keyword. That's one of the things that they search for in internet traffic. So in case you actually think I'm lying, this is one of the reasons I'm very careful about what I say to not say too often certain words because it's part of the algorithm and I'm going to pop up at some screen somewhere <clears throat> where, you know, too many people are talking about it on, on my site. So that's why uh, I block. That's why you cannot type National Zucking Agency with the real letters on chat. Try it. It's not going to work. It's going to fill it's it's going to stop you. So if you try to type in Zucking IA and and National Zucking Agency on there in its true initials, it's not going to come out. Are there any ungoogled versions of the Android UHF and VHF transceivers? What the heck is an Android UHF VHF transceiver? I do not use any, I am not familiar with Android having a UHF or VHF transceivers. They're hardware, and most of the other ones are called SDR, software, um, what's a software defined radio, SDR. So I don't know of anything Android. The one that's Android is, you know, like your Android car, Android Auto. Now that's Android. You can type National Zucking Agency. That's that's allowed. You can't type, you know, no not non such agency. You can you can't type that. Okay, so don't over type something. You know, to be honest with you, people think that I'm somehow not patriotic because you know I talk about the National Zucking Agency in a in a bad way. The problem is, the problem is how it's cohorted by deep state to do whatever they want, without any kind of checks and balances, and they're not really spying on the, the opposition. I wish they were. They spent all their time spying on, you know, the new threat in Afghanistan, the you know is is K. The is is K. Why don't they you know do the spying over there? But no, they're not going to do that. They're going to they're going to spy on every American. It only makes sense. It only makes sense. And so how, how can I talk positively about, about an institution in this country that does not even remotely follow the Constitution? I mean, we're supposed to have freedom of speech here, and, and yet we are being surveilled by our own government. And they're going to say, oh, we're not really surveilling you. All right, right, right. Okay, because... Legally, they can say, as long as they don't go to court with it, 
then, you know, how do you know you're being surveilled? So they can surveil you all day, and as long as they don't go to court, then there's no paperwork. So, you know, it's just a bunch of lies, a bunch of lies about the surveillance part of this. You know, I, I, uh, <coughs> I, it, I've told you the kind of surveillance that's being done. I told you about the, you know, the, the stuff that's, uh, that's what Snowden revealed, but now that's being duplicated now in, in private enterprise and corporations. And now, strangely enough, there's now a shift. So instead of the government doing the spying, the, the corporations are doing the spying. And then the, you know, the military industrial complex, and then the government is then buying that information from the corporations, just like I told you in this video about the God's eye view from the internet trunks where they buy that information, the government buying that information from the uh, internet backbone providers and as they already buying it from AT&T and so on. So, and I'm supposed to be happy about this. Oh, well, this guy is not patriotic. He's like uh, talking negatively and calling the, ne the, uh, the agencies by a bad name like National Zucking Agency. Well, uh, you know, in case you you didn't know, of course, the reference to Zuck is that the biggest spy of the world, the biggest collector of information about each and every one of you is Zucking Facebook or Zucking Zuckbook. And when I was doing Periscope, I focused my broadcast specifically on attacking the dangers of Zuckbook. And I'm going to tell you right now, the reason I, uh, I don't spend so much time focusing on it, even though I still say zucking this and zucking that, the reason I don't focus it on my channel is because either you guys don't watch it or YouTube, YouTube is preventing it from, from getting seen. Maybe they think it's a bad word. I have no idea. So they don't let me speak badly about Facebook. If I speak badly about the Facebook, then... then uh, it doesn't get seen. If you if you want you want to prove the point, uh, I invented the word "what the zuck." It, probably ten years ago now, and it's on it's on Urban Dictionary. And I invented it, and you know, for somebody like me, an ordinary person, inventing a word like "what the zuck," uh, and I own "what the zuck that net domain," and and. Uh, and to to have me uh, uh, become known for doing that, and yet I can't say Zuck uh, here on YouTube. In fact, I have a video. I have a video about why I call Zuckbook Zucking Zuckbook and everything to do with Zuck. What the Zuck? There's an actual video on that. I think that video has two thousand views. That's to, to show you. I mean, some of my videos are mil a million views and from my channel. From my channel. I have a video with only 2,000 views, and that's that Zuck video. I mean, it's a poor video, but the point is, it, you know, I explain why I use Zuck. And, uh, yeah, so... So Zuck is a general term for me to, to, to say that, you know, you're going to be Zucked. Someone's going to surveil you and spy on you, and that's the, that's the being Zucked. So if you want to get Zucked, you know, keep using WhatsApp. Want to get Zucked, keep using Instagram. Want to get Zucked, keep, you know, keep saying, oh, I got to keep, I got to keep in touch with my family. I got to talk to them on Facebook Messenger. What the Zuck? Yes, exactly. That video sucked. Yes, exactly, Yuri. So, so maybe it's a maybe I need to do it again. But I guarantee, if I make a suck video, no one's gonna watch it because YouTube will throttle it. <clears throat> YouTube will throttle. Did Google buy DuckDuckGo? Hell no. Let me introduce you to my new sponsor, which uh, I will talk about in every video. Let me introduce you to my new sponsor. And that is Start Page. We haven't officially started, but I'm going to, you know, 
speak kindly about them even now. I, I you know, I've talked about them before uh, a lot, but uh, uh, now that you mention Dr. Go, then I'm going to mention Start Page. So, yeah, if you're considering DuckDuckGo, you should also consider looking at Start Page. Call them on a landline. Will you will you use inter- Instagram to add to your channel? Hell fucking no. No fucking way. So my, my brother said, uh, so I was talking to my brother on Signal. And he's in a different country. So I'm talking to my brother on Signal. And he said, oh, I, uh, I'm going to delete my Signal account now because I don't have space on my phone. Okay, and then, okay, because if you can do that, then I'm not going to talk to you because you're not going to find me anywhere. And then my sister responds, my sister responds, okay, I'll talk to you on Messenger. So my response to that is, okay, uh, okay, sis and bro, talk to each other on Messenger. You're not going to find me there. You're not going to talk to me. You're not going to talk to me. Uh, So, yeah. Because I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. But just, you know, just to uh, make sure that I cover all the bases and, and help my brother, I said, I'm going to send you a phone. I'm going to send you a phone, bro. Because you say your phone doesn't have enough memory. I'll send you a brand new phone. Okay. Okay. Then uh, then he, uh, uh, then I ask, would you like a de Google phone or a Google phone? Would you like a Google phone or a Google phone? And of course, what do you think they choose? Googled. <clears throat> so there's only so much I can do. Okay, even my in my own family, there's only so much I can do. So, you know, they should they should realize that you know I have uh, three hundred and thirty two thousand subscribers, and it's starting to get significant. That's you know that's uh, starting to be a good number three hundred thirty two thousand subscribers uh you know which puts me uh, equal to the the highest level youtuber that deals with privacy so we're now equal and yet my own family will say oh we're gonna stick to our iphones and we're gonna stick to our google phone so uh, i'm sure i'm sure most of you have the same issue. Most of you have the same concerns. You you try to explain to your family. They don't pay attention. And they say, well, why? Why do I need to do that? It's inconvenient. It's inconvenient. I can't find my apps. Can't find my apps. Oh, I got to dump your uh, D Google phone. I, I can't do, uh, you know, I can't do Messenger. I think you can do Messenger, but you shouldn't. Oh, I can't, you know, I can't... Uh, I got to use Google Docs. Can't use your phone. Okay. I mean, you know, I got to use Facebook. So, you know, obviously, I'm not going to try to convince you. You, you, uh, or, I mean, we can't try to convince our families. We can only do so much. And uh, the problem is, as I mentioned earlier in this program, I said that when I talk about something, I'm, Often I'm already too late, uh, or at least at the beginnings of it. And somebody will always say, "Well, you know, it's we don't see it in the press. Nobody's talking about it. Therefore, it can't be a big deal." Unfortunately, by the time it gets to me talking about it, it is a big deal. Uh, but it's just it, you can evade it when I talk about it. What will happen is it will get to the point where you can't evade it. You can't evade it anymore when it's just so embedded in your life and that every move you make, you know, your cars with your camera in the car, cameras in in the phone, everything doing image processing that can actually analyze what you're doing and say, uh, you know, the camera will know that you crossed your leg. It will actually know that. It will actually uh, know, oh, you you closed your eyes, you must be sleepy. It, you know, th- this kind of stuff that's happening and the intelligence of the device is knowing that, and people are saying, who cares? Who cares? Why are you saying good night, Bob?
Great go. Uh, uh, I've known people that wouldn't even converse unless it was on FB. My attitude is, see ya, see ya. I, you know, I, I've stopped concerning myself. You know, I, uh, for example, people I went to school with, they're all on Zaking Zak book, and now I don't talk to anyone. And you know what? I don't care. I don't care. <clears throat> Let's go to that to the point. China is all over Hollywood apps. Uh, what's your take on Chinese paying and hard? As well, you know, uh, uh, everyone is. It's not, I mean, you're you're saying, oh, China's spying. Well, well, everyone is. That's the whole point. It's the, the whole the whole thing. It's a surveillance community and often international and guess what the 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 bad part is we are the target Americans so if you're not American uh, you know you're less of a target so if you're an American you're a target they know more information I mean just look at the, all the the Spokio Intellius people finders all those they're all about Americans how come they don't have <coughs> <coughs> How come they don't have a lot of information about about people in different countries? But they know everything about every American. And it's all over the internet. So we are highly searchable compared to somebody, let's say, in Japan or Indonesia or whatever. They're not as searchable as we are in the United States. You're not cool if you don't have IG. Oh, yeah. I... I'm the opposite of coolness. So you, you know, some some people think 5G is safe and okay. Uh, I gave you a video where I didn't really, you know, I'm I'm. <clears throat> we're kind of in a mode here where at some point they will only have 5G. But actually, the reality is, to tell you the truth, because. You're not being told the correct information here. Uh, we're actually not yet on real 5G. We're not on real 5G. What they they did an improvement on LTE. They did did a little bit of uh, of uh, MIMO MIMO antennas, multiple in, multiple out antennas, and they're increasing the bandwidth because there are more antennas. And more traffic flowing through. They're basically adding more channels. So your your phone, your phone is actually connecting to more channels, and then they're calling that 5G. But that's not really the 5G that's in my video. We're not actually there yet. The true 5G is is in the millimeter band, you know, microwave just below below microwave, like you know. 20 gigahertz and above, that kind of range. We're not there. We're not there. So I actually don't know how far we are into that point, but we're not at the true 5G yet, even though they're calling it 5G. Uh, how do I get uh, the Google phone? You come to my uh, website, BraxMe. So because of that, I am not certain how deadly 5G is from a privacy point of view. As far as the beam forming, if that's really in effect yet, I'm actually not sure because it's kind of an intermediate technology. So what are they going to call the real 5G? Are they going to call it 6G? So I am not. I am not. Uh, I am not certain. So for this reason, uh, I I'm not sure that this 5G that they have is as potent as the true 5G that I expect will will be coming sometime soon so this came, came in kind of quick and i'm not sure it's a real 5g anyway the the main problem with 5g from a privacy point of view is beam forming and the ability to pinpoint your exact location uh, to the inch and the reason is the antenna of the uh, the uh, uh, LT, uh of the phone carrier it's actually pointing at your phone. So they actually know where you are because the, the antenna huh, by software has to point to you. So it's a software pointing. 
So they can they can point the software at where you are to keep the signal going. So so the machine has to know where you are in order to focus the antenna signal to be stronger where you are. So uh, so it's like the signal has to follow you, and then they have to store that information. Say, oh, I'm over here, and they point the 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 antenna at you by software. The antennas don't move, but through uh, things like phasing and and uh, and um, um, various techniques, electromagnetically, they can actually change the the direction of an antenna and and focus a beam uh, uh, from software, N not hardware, software. So, so if they have like let's say eight antennas pointed. They can actually use those eight antennas to create a shape that they can point based on how they send a signal over the, let's say, eight antennas like that. <clears throat> so that's a true danger of 5G. So I'm not sure yet if we're in that level of danger, but I guess we have to assume that it can be. So if you have a 5G phone, so some of you have bought uh, from me, I, I sold a few 4A, 4 5G. So you have a 5G phone, even coming from me. Uh, well, I sell I sell what uh, what uh, you guys want. So I can degoogle any any of those the 4A 5G I, from Pixel. I can degoogle those, uh, but I don't know I don't know uh, uh, what I can do about that because if you're buying it, then I don't have any choice. I sell whatever you want. Uh, I believe you can still choose LTE on the menu. So I believe you can still say, I don't want to use 5G at this moment. Okay, so it, you have the control. It's up to you. Now, is that a concern? It's a concern if you understand your threat. You've got to look at each device and see what the threat is. For example, what is the threat of a landline? Well, the threat of a landline is your carrier will will have the ability to wiretap and listen into any conversation they feel like it. The government can too because they built that hardware. Well, that's, you know, um, they obviously know where you live. So is 5G equivalent in that sense? Because 5G means, you know, they uh, can track your location. But if they know where you are anyway, because you pay your bill at, with the same address, is there real danger? It's up to you. You have to you have to to gauge that. You have to gauge that. 5G by itself, or V O L T E, those themselves are not are not uh, I the issues with technology. They're they're different things. Okay, so so because your traffic, your data traffic, is still flowing through the internet the normal way. How do you protect that? Well, obviously the same way as you protect anything else, a VPN tour, things like that. Same, same technique. So, so if you use if you use a, a, VP, a VPN, for example, and you're on your phone at home using Wi-Fi, then it's as safe as anything else. I mean, it doesn't matter that it's 5G or not. It's not going to capture that data because it's going through a VPN. <clears throat> But whether it's 5G or not, it can capture your voice because voice is included in what the law requires that they be able to capture. So anything related to voice, anything related to voice, as long as it's not one of the encrypted platforms, it's going to be captured if they want. And is that a concern? Maybe not. It depends. Depends on your threat. You have to consider that yourself. That has nothing to do with the data, the data flow. If you're using data, that's different. Now, voice over LTE is just a way they funnel your traffic through data instead of through 3G, which is the original way. That doesn't mean anything. It flows to the same place, and they, they all join up into the same PSDN, the, the, uh, pri the public switch telephone network. So you end up in a PSDN, and that's where they spy on you. So it doesn't matter whether you're doing voice over LTE, Wi-Fi calling, or whatever it is that you're doing. It does not make any difference. You're using a PSDN, the, the public switch telephone networks, and they will spy on you at the PSDN side. That's what it was in my video, my very unpopular video on that. 
uh, make sure, uh, is there any truth to people saying that when 5G is fully implemented, it can work like a millimeter wave scanner at the airport and see us through a wall? Uh, uh, no, that's not the way that works. You're talking X-ray, which is uh, the uh, uh, ionizing ionizing amount of radiation above microwave. That's X-ray. No, you cannot be ionized by millimeter wave. That's uh, uh, it's below microwave. So no, uh, David. Uh, David has super chat. It's so far up here, I can't see it anymore. What? What? Uh, Want to type it again, David? I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything. Is is that far back? Okay, I'll watch for it. I'll watch for it and, and uh, just uh, type type it again. So you're over the target. I know this because o only your videos or live streams are garbled for me. Just your stuff. You're over the target. What do you mean garbled? What does that mean? What does that mean garbled? I also don't let my phone access my email. Uh, not a bad idea. I'm very very selective about what what. Uh, what is on my phone? Yes, especially, you know, email. Uh, Got to be very careful with that. I don't see anything from David, so. Yeah, just like me if I, you know, I, I don't see anything. You said, uh, I, yeah, I don't think, I mean, I'm po I mean, it must have been hours ago because <laughs> it's just like, not in recent <clears throat> life log. What is life log? Life lock. Don't tell me you're talking about life lock. If you're talking about life lock, then you know. <laughs> don't, don't talk about it. Okay, so. Uh, the, the most evil products on the internet. Uh, Norton Antivirus and LifeLock. From the evil company. No way. Scam. No. Scam. LifeLock is a scam. Please don't do anything like that. That is a scam. And they'll probably sell it to you because you're all, you know, so eager to do something about your lives. And you're saying... Well, somebody said that I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get protection from uh, LifeLock, Norton Antivirus, and a Norton VPN from Symantec. I guess they're not called Symantec anymore; they're called uh, Norton now. Yeah, uh, yeah, right. Scam, scam, and scam. Three scams in a row. So, good night, Dr hey Drac. How are you doing, Dark? So yeah, three scams in a row. So don't don't uh, don't pay attention to that. Life log. Life log, or life lock. I don't know what life log is. I have no knowledge of what that is. Don't know what I have no idea, what life log is. No no information or knowledge about it. I guess uh, I don't know everything. Three in what? Three in one deal, huh? Wow, yeah. So, McAfee, what? Antivirus? Hell no! D didn't you watch my video? Don't, un unless you're a corporate entity and you're going to spy on your employees, anyways. It doesn't matter. For your home use, you have no reason to have an antivirus. None. None. And you know the the one they use in a corporate environment. You know the the um, Sophos and all this, those are different products. They're not made for home antivirus. Those 
the sophos and all those things they're made for spying they're spying software so the corporation wants them obviously they want to spy on the employees so in their case they're going to want to do those kinds of things and put antivirus and whatever in your computer because they want to spy on you that now for your home use why do you want to be spied on so no thank you yeah uh vehement vehement thank you so no, you do not want any antivirus. And then somebody says, "Oh, what about uh, uh, mal, mal this and mal that? What what what's the uh, uh, malware bytes?" And and then you're gonna say, "Oh, but what about?" And then I'm gonna get another. What about what about Avast? What about what about Kaspersky? It's like there is no exception. There is no exception. You don't need it. Instead, worry about your own practices. A a, a, a a antivirus isn't going to protect you from from uh, from a uh, phishing attack. You have to use your head. You you it's like you know you you get a call uh, you get get a call and say, I'm from Microsoft and we're we're from Microsoft Technical Support and we we need to fix your computer. Your computer has a virus. There's another one, Rose. What about clan? You you can talk about any any uh, antivirus products you want. It's not going to change my answer. Please, <laughs> nothing will change my answer. You can put any anti. You can put anything you want. It's, you're going to get the same answer, okay? And some of you will say, "This guy is lying. It's not true." Because we use it in a corporation, and it. Yeah, I know. Because in 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 a corporation, you're you you want the spy. You want to spy on everyone. You want to know what they're posting on Facebook. You want to know if they're going to post company secrets. You want to know if they're sending like secret messages to someone outside the company. You want to know that. Therefore, you're going to use the spy devices there. So that antivirus is not for you. That antivirus is not pr to protect you, the employee. It's to protect the corporation. So don't talk about that as irrelevant here. This has nothing to do with anything. For your own use at home, it's a zucking scam. Do not use it. It's a scam. Now, you can use Windows Defender if you want on your own computer. You can use Windows Defender if you're running Windows. If you're not running Windows, don't use anything. <clears throat> okay? So, save money. Save money. So this is look look call sign Viber House of Vast VPN. It's like a vast is one of the worst too, worse than all of them. They're gonna spy on you like crazy. So uh, anyway, um, DARPA life log on Wikipedia. I don't know what it is, so we'll check it out later. I have no idea what it is. So the question is noted, but the answer is not noted since I don't know what the answer is. Never heard of it. Why would Microsoft of all companies get a pass? Uh, because their software is so unsophisticated that it doesn't do anything dangerous. That's why Microsoft gets a pass. It, you, you, might, you might say this, the incompetence of the product actually gives it a pass okay so there so there the, the reason Microsoft uh, uh, defender is okay is is uh, because it doesn't it doesn't do anything bad at all because it doesn't have the capability to do anything bad so no Sean I, I'm not familiar with that what browser you Chrome all browsers peter west watch my video on browser isolation i always have multiple browsers running i am, have multiple browsers running right now right this moment i have multiple browsers between two to three browsers running at all times have you i can't afford new phones but i can install graphene in my other phone is that a secure lineage yes it is if you can install graphene you're an expert 
If you're able to install graphene, then you're an expert. I've not successfully installed graphene because I haven't tried on any other devices, but the device I tried it on didn't, didn't work. How good is C Cleaner? Don't know. Why do you need it? By the way, if you think, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, the one that uh, Hillary used. Uh, bit something, right? Be careful, guys. The, the uh, SSD drives now are not erasable. The, those, those cleaner products don't actually clean it. So I told you about, uh, about the old devices being, being uh, spied on by th three-letter agencies so they can capture private keys. So they can actually do that on old SSD drives that are used by ISPs. Like, you know, like Linode's and so on. Digital Ocean, they, you know, they use SSD drives instead of magnetic. If you use Beach Blit, yeah, that Bleach Blit, yeah, Bleach Bit, Bleach Bit, yeah. So, yeah, so SSD drives are not erasable. So you got to you gotta worry about that. So uh, if you think they're being erased, they're actually just skipping through it. So because of that, it's kind of a problem. So I think the only way to to clean up an SSD drive is with a hammer. Hammer, yeah, that's yeah, hammer. Now, if you use a magnetic drive, those beach, bleach bit and all that will work. But uh, if you're using SSD, as most of us are, I wonder if they made SSD for that purpose so they can't spy on you. Remember what I said about Apple. You know, now going to spy on your phone to so check for uh, illegal images. Uh, you know, it's going to come to a point where you, you will, you can't deny, because you bring your your device to the nerd nerd squad at at Best Buy, and then they scan that drive, the SSD, which is unerasable, and they will actually find stuff on there, and off to jail you go. So, yeah. FYI, okay, not going to protect you if, you know, if you do illegal things, and that's your business. That's your risk. So, for the rest of us who don't do any such things, I guess uh, that's not, that's not a problem. However, for our security, just be under, understanding that SSD drives cannot actually be deleted, and just know that if you have any special secrets you want to hide. Samsung SSDs. I got one right here. I'm a yeah. This one is two terabytes. Two terabytes. I should have put an Amazon link on there. Yeah, yeah. It's look how thin that is. And then this is the one that doesn't come standard with. I actually found a short cable from. Uh, from Amazon and then what I do is I put velcro so I do, do this and then I put velcro on my computer and then I just uh, attach it to my computer when I need it and it doesn't fall off and it just stays there so that's my trick and I always keep my data on on those drives instead of keeping my data on the computer I did Calyx OS very zucking difficult yeah so that's why I offer a degoogling service because it's you know it's to be honest with you it's not easy. Somebody said why don't you do a video? Uh, uh, <clears throat> because many of you will try to do it and you'll just keep asking me. And by the time I do it, you know, and explain to you what you're doing wrong, uh, <laughs> we might as well just do it for you. So yeah, so we we do de we degoogle for you for select phones. And we uh, charge a hundred and thirty dollars for it. So we can do uh, all the pixels from Pixel Three. Well, Pixel we can do a Pixel, but uh, I, they're not they're not they don't offer Voice over LTE, so so they're not supported anymore by many carriers. But we can do Pixel Three, Pixel Four, Pixel Four A, 
uh, those varieties. We cannot do Pixel 5. We can do uh, uh, Moto G7s, Moto G7 Plus, uh, Moto G7 Play, uh, and Moto G7 Power. So we're selling power now. Uh, the power is for Verizon. We do not do Moto G. We can do one plus six. I have done some one plus sevens. They have not been easy, so I'm not very fond of one plus seven. So uh, we don't do anything T like sixty one plus sixty or seventy. Anything with a T is carrier. The T stands for must sound stand for carrier locked because they they actually you know make it difficult for you to unlock the bootloader. So because of that. We don't do, do those either. So if you're going to ask me what the, the best ones are for the Googling, the best ones uh, have been uh, the cheapest one that's the best is Pixel 3s. So, and they're very close to the same price as the other one. So I'm going to say Pixel 3 is better because, for one, I believe of the ones I mentioned, only the Pixel 3 is waterproof. I don't know of any uh, tablets that I can do at the moment because the problem is there's no new tablets and so there's no new code. Nobody's doing them. Uh, my thoughts on Mint, um, any thoughts on Mint mobile carrier? You can use any carrier, it doesn't really matter. Mint is not a mobile carrier. Mint is an MVNO, just like Ting.com, uh, Cricket. All of these, they are MVNOs. In other words, they're just resellers, like Google Fi. They're not actually carriers. There are only three carriers, guys. There are only three carriers in the U.S. T-Mobile, which includes Sprint, AT&T, and Verizon. That is it. That is it. Okay? Um... So anyway, I I always stock uh, uh, Pixel threes. I'm I'm out of them. I'm out of them today, but uh, you know I I should have them shortly, maybe tomorrow. So I'm gonna have a lot of Pixel threes. So I always have Pixel threes. I I have at the moment I have a lot of Pixel four sixty fours. Let me see. There's one behind me here. What do I have behind me? a lot of something okay 464 there's so I got a lot of stock of this this week this week next week I don't know uh, pixel 4 XLs I don't have a lot of right this moment but I'm getting them so if you go to my store and you're looking for these models and I don't have them just be patient they, they come uh, but be, depending on the stock in the in the world, uh, you know I'm not I'm not always uh, able to get them every week. So I let's say I buy a bunch of them, and I'm probably one of the biggest buyers of used phones on the <laughs> on the U.S. Now <laughs> I buy a lot of phones, and I can't get stock. So you know we're we're running a factory here making these phones, and you know a lot of you buy them, and we have a lot of them. But they do go very fast. They go very fast. So, you know, so if I'm not able to keep up with it, uh, uh, I order and then the, the, the supply sh shows up again and then we're able to keep up. So everybody eventually is able to get one. It's just, it's just uh, not, not certain that that day you look at the store that there's going to be stock. So, okay. So, so like if you look at the store, right this exact moment you're not going to find much in the store but don't worry because after this broadcast i'm going to add some more I, I, we just got a shipment so i know we're going to be putting a lot more in the store this weekend there's going to be a lot this weekend okay so don't uh, don't worry about running out and i have a, a lot of orders coming in so it's just up and down okay i don't think t on the one plus means Lock. No, it means uh, it's a carrier version. The T means that it's a telephone carrier version. I don't know. Maybe that's what they mean by the T. It, it means that it was modified by the carrier, and which means that the 
control of the unlocking is done by the carrier. I'm talking about OEM unlocking, not locking the phone, because those are unlocked phones. I'm talking about carrier unlock. I'm sorry, OEM unlock, which is a completely different thing. So phones have carrier lock, which is the ability to change from from one carrier to the other, which is one separate issue. And the one the one that concerns me is called OEM unlock, which allows you to lock it up, to unlock the phone and change the, the flash image. That's called OEM unlock. Not all phones can do that. Like you can't do it to Huawei phones. Okay? So if T-Mobile is hacked, does that include the resellers? Uh, Because I was hacked in T-Mobile, so uh, so based on what they say, then it should be similar to the hack that's even bigger, which is of Equifax. So somebody already has that same information, name, address, phone number. They already have that on Equifax. So yeah, uh, best carrier, <laughs> USS Enterprise. Yeah, there you go. You have to be able to flash it. Um, never trust any corporation. That's what Com Contrarian says. Uh, OEM Unlocked is what Rob, yeah, I'm talking about OEM Unlocked, yeah. So, uh, like for example, you can't send me a pixel and say, can you, OEM, can you uh, flash this? Because pixels are not necessarily OEM unlockable, only the ones from Google Store. If you buy a phone from the Google Store, then it is unlockable. If you buy it from T-Mobile, Verizon, or, or uh, AT&T, it is not OEM unlockable, okay? So that's a lesson from you. Never buy from a carrier. Never buy a phone from a carrier. They also load some software on there often made to spy on you. Never buy from a carrier. Can you de-Google an iPhone? No. Well, obviously, you no. There's no Google in an iPhone, but you cannot de-Apple an iPhone. No. You have an iPhone, you are zocked. You are zocked. So, yeah, I'm going to be interested to see the spying image, spying business they're going to put on the phone. I mean, it's just crazy. Crazy. Don't ever use your iPhone with a camera. Never. Suck. Can sat phone be spied even? Well, a sat phone doesn't have any social media data on there. Well, th th there are some that have that, but most sat phones are just phones. So yes, they can listen to your phone conversation, but they can do that anyway on any phone. So in a sense, there's nothing. So sat phones is kind of an expensive version of a, uh, if you think about it, it's an expensive version of a flip phone. Is there anything special about it? No. Do you need to use a sat phone? No. If, you're, if you want to have some privacy, use something like a signal, something like that. Don't use, uh, you don't need to use a sat phone. You use uh, use what I do. I have inner, you, you know, do a hotspot with a puck hotspot. Don't put internet on your phone and then uh, use signal if you want to go that extreme. If you want to go that extreme. What if I remove the microphones from the phone? Can they still listen? Um, I don't know if you, uh, uh, well, it's not going to be a phone anymore, obviously, so I don't know what your point is. So yes, you can remove the microphone. They can spy on you from the other sensors, like the gyro sensor, and that can sense vibration. So if you're going to do that, then you you uh, need to do more. Now on my the Google phones, there's a sensors off switch, which will turn off all the other sensors, like GPS and all that. Uh, Cyberdoc, thank you. Uh, thoughts on Samsung 21 5G. I don't know anything about a Samsung 21, 
So can't help you with that. I would never buy a Samsung. So that's in my video, The Wise Ninja, about using a phone without a SIM card. It's a recent video, using a phone without a SIM card. If you want to go with that extreme, you there's a way. And it protects you from certain threats, like uh, uh, the Pegasus threat. So, didn't you say you are a ham? Yes, I am a ham. I even have my equipment. I, I think I moved most of my equipment on the boat. I, I'm trying to see if I still have any, any here. Yeah, I think I moved my, uh, all of my uh, radios on the boat. So my boat has a marine VHF as well as my uh, HF radio. HF radio is is uh, on my boat. Now, in my house, I have VHF radios. Like the, you know, uh, 440 uh, megahertz and all that. Uh, I use static white noise while phone is idle, so I'm not listening to, listen to Call Me Crazy. Uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, if, if you want to do that. It depends on your, your threat. Can't find your call sign. I hope not. I hope you can. If you find my call sign, tell me, because you're not supposed to see my call sign. Okay, the rule is you need to use your call sign when you are transmitting on, on uh, ham radio. 440 is UHF, not VHF. So you can use said phone if you remove one, two, three. Uh, to a point. So, so yeah, so uh, by law, you are required to use your call sign when you're doing... Thank you, stand a man uh, is texting more private? No. No. Of course not. Zero. So, so uh, by law, you're required to use a call sign when you do a ham transmission. So when I did it, in some of my videos, I did have, I do have to use my call sign. Uh, so I have to edit my video so I don't use my call sign on the video since I am not required to show you a video with the call sign. That is not a requirement. How are you a general and don't know UHF is 440? Yeah, it is it is 440. I, I hardly ever even go there anymore. So anyway, 440 and 220. Uh, is it great to protect yourself without giving... Is it actually... you can, Do people actually get arrested for using ham without giving a call sign? Uh, you, you can be, the FCC has roving cars that can actually triangulate a position. So if you do it extensively, you will get caught. However, if you use it once and you move, change location and use it again and then change location and do it again, uh, no, I don't think you're going to get caught. Okay, I mean, there's a limitation to technology. So if you do it from your house repeatedly, the FCC will be able to say, okay, the transmission's coming from this house. And they will see that. So they have fixed antennas all over the city searching for that. And if they find a transmission, they go look at it on their computer and they can triangulate you and say, oh, the transmissions are happening at this house. So yes, they can do that. Okay. Uh, I don't use... Uh, I don't use uh, the internet modes of of uh, of uh, ham like DMR. You know all that. I don't. I don't use any of that. Why? Because it's not fun for me. Because it's using the internet. Because the idea is to learn how to deal with it in an in, a, in an emergency. 
Do Samsung phones have better? No. No. Why would they have any better privacy than, than anything? All phones are bad. iPhones, Samsung phones, Google phones. The only phone that's safe for you is either a, well, it's a de-Google phone for now. De-Google phone. What about Wi-Fi numbers? What does that mean, Wi-Fi number? If you're passing through PSTN, the public switch telephone network, then they're going to get you if they want to get you. Otherwise, they're not going to get you. Most of us are on the public switch telephone network, and they're not getting us because we're not talking about anything interesting. What kind of security dangers come with my new smart TVs? Ways to circumvent. You know, a lot of new TVs now come with Fire TV, Amazon Zucking Fire TV, okay? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I got a boat, and the boat was delivered to me with Zucking Echo on the TV. And it's really, really zucked up. So I, I was looking and see how it works. Of course, I never use it, but on on uh, unlike a home echo, on the uh, on the uh, what do you call this on a TV, you have to press the remote to activate it. Uh, it's actually one of those where it doesn't auto activate. You have to press the button to talk. So <clears throat> yeah, so obviously I will never press that button. So, don't use it. <laughs> Back to CW, okay. Um, throw it overboard. Is your server on the boat? No. Uh, Pearson, nice. More people think wisely. What? Um, so, I guess my Google VPN isn't helping me. I can't believe that Google offered a VPN. Have you used Lineage OS? I use only Lineage OS. And my, my phone is on Lineage OS. The Google though, no, no Google apps. No gaps. Lineage OS with gaps is useless. It's got to be Lineage OS, no gaps. If you do that, then you're de-Googled, in which case you're safe. What about TV brainwash, brainwashing you mentioned on other live stream? Um, I, I, what, what did I say about TV brainwashing? Uh, we're not talking about like the old subliminal message, are we? Back, you know, from the 60s or 70s or whenever they did that. Uh, what's this? Um, E-Foundations is, uh, is, is like Lineage OS. It's de-Googled. It's, it's great. And so uh, you can do that. E-Foundation is is really for Europe. So if you don't want to buy from me because I'm over here and you want to buy it from the from the EU, then you can use a E-Foundation fund, which is pretty much the same deal, but they sell only Samsungs. So they've concentrated on Samsung. So if you want to buy a Pixel, you got to buy it from me. Uh, and I do ship internationally. So that's the difference. Other than that, functionally, they're the same. Now, clear phone is a completely different thing. Clear phone is a different animal and I don't really uh, I, I don't really understand you know how a clear phone is gonna gonna help me the, the way the clear phone works is they actually centralize the network so the entire network on your phone is it's, it's almost like a built-in VPN but kind of in a spying way because what they do is they take the network traffic and then they funnel it through clear phone HQ and then from there they filter it and that way they can filter content centrally not sure i like that idea calyx os is good yes yeah, pretty much any any uh any uh aosp or android open source project phone without gaps is good they're all good calyx graphene E-Foundation, Lineage, uh, 
as long as there are no gaps. There, there are some versions of those with gaps in it. So it's got to be no gaps. If there are no gaps, they're great. Uh, so the Freedom Phone, whatever the Freedom Phone is, is basically uh, one of those. It's AOSB, private label, meaning you take a Lineage OS, you take the Lineage OS label off, put a few different pictures in there, and call it Freedom Phone. So not very sophisticated, no big deal, and then it's a the Google phone. So yes, it's the Google in that way. So so uh, yeah, so you can uh, uh, that'll function just fine as a the Google phone. Now it, the problem is the phone itself. The Freedom Phone is a cheapo cheapo phone. For that price, you should get something better like a Pixel. Pixels are nice. Very solid, waterproof, all glass. So yeah, pixels are more resistant to scratches and so on. So because it's all glass and it's waterproof. So yeah, pixels are better phones. Uh, what's your opinion on Apple and Gangstar? Okay, I'm I'm out of time. Sorry, I did not look at the time here. Uh, can seller provider see sent message? No. Okay, so uh, what do I mean RIP Pine Phone? What happened to the Pine Phone? Uh, Pine Phone just has, you know, growing pains with the software here, but it's not the, it's not the fault of the phone. It's the fault of the Linux makers. They just haven't stepped up to the plate here. Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, sorry for not pre-publishing this video so very few of you actually knew I was doing a live stream so you may have to watch the beginning again thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video on Thursday see you later